Hey folks, Alan Manick, the Hot Rod Hippie here. This week's video is a quick product review of an $18 wireless code scanner. This week's video is a little bit different than usual, so go ahead and check it out and I'll explain it in a minute. So in today's video, we will be taking a look at a compact OBD2 Wi-Fi code scanner. If you're a new viewer, this is not how I generally review things. If you're a long time viewer, then clearly you already know that. But I thought I might change up this video just a little bit today. Now, the reason that I'm doing a different style of review than I usually do is because this is a $18 scanner code reader, use your phone for it. It's really not that in-depth of a product that I felt I should go into some crazy depth and detail for a product review. Now, I don't have exceptionally high expectations of this thing, so I didn't do my normal in-depth review. Usually when I do a review, I use a product for at least a few days beforehand, if not weeks or months, depending on the product. This one here, I have not used this thing at all. The only thing I've done in preparation for this video is install the applications that I'm gonna be using with it. So for this different style of review, I'm approaching this like a end user might do. I'm expecting this is not really a professional product. This is something that folks, DIYers, home warriors are gonna be using. So I wanted to pick the product up and test it as they may test it. Pull it out of the box and go through the user experience from beginning to end and show you how it works for me. So all I've got is I've got the tool, I've got my Android tablet, I've got my iPhone, and I've got the car I'm gonna be testing it on. There are a few things to note in those instructions. One, it does say that this is for OBD2 gasoline vehicles only, not diesels. It also says it is not for electric vehicles and is not for hybrid vehicles. Now, you may have noticed in that little bit of an intro there that uh, I have a hybrid vehicle. My daily driver is a Toyota Prius. There's also a weird list of vehicles that this tool cannot be used on, such as like a 2000 Honda Civic, which is a pretty common car that folks may want this for, a 2003 GMC truck, I, I don't know what's different about 2003 GMC truck. I tune LS-based engines. I am not aware of any difference for that specific vehicle. There's a little list. Some of them don't make sense. Some of them do. So you might want to take a look at that. And they actually recommend in the instructions different applications for either Android or iOS. I did install the same application on the Apple and the Android, as well as the other recommended one for the Android, just to get a little different feel for things, see which one maybe I like better. Now, there are a bunch of different OBD2 scanner apps out there. I'm using the ones that they recommend in the instructions for this tool, though this may well work with others. I'm not going to go trying every application out there to see which is the best. Maybe that could be a whole video on its own. The Google Play Store and the Apple Store both had the recommended applications for me to use, so I didn't really need to go to their website and get them. Both of them installed properly, easily. My iPhone is an iPhone 6S, so it's a few generations back, so it's not in the latest and greatest one, so I'm not confirming just this only works with the latest iPhone. As far as my tablet is concerned, it's an Amazon Fire tablet that's a few generations old like quite a few generations old. So it's lower end as far as tablets are concerned. You could probably pick up a used one on like Craigslist, very cheap. I'd wanna say like 20 bucks, maybe. So this could be a really great little setup. Maybe you get the $18 scanner with the $20 tablet, a free application, and for less than the cost of, hold on, and for less than the cost of, say this, dusty code reader that I had in the car, this old Matco one that I had for years now. I think this thing's like 70, 80 bucks. For less than the cost of this, maybe you get a more functional and user-friendly experience. We'll find out in a second. Now there's nothing wrong with the car, the check engine light is not on. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug a sensor under the hood so that we can make something wrong for testing purposes. Mass airflow sensor disconnected. Now the check engine light will be on. So now all there is left to do is go ahead and take this thing, plug it into the OBD2 port on this car, fire up the application, and get to work with it. So all I need to do is pick the Wi-Fi underscore OBD2. 
Now I'm ready to go back, pull up the application that I've already installed. For Android, the application that they recommend is called Torque Lite. It's a free application. They do have a paid version. That's what they recommended in the instructions for this tool for Android. I could not get that to work. I'm using my Android tablet here. Couldn't get that application to find the tool. The application opened, gave me all kinds of options, but it would not find the tool, even though the Android tablet was Wi-Fi connected to it. Now for Apple, they recommend an application called OBD Car Doctor. I installed that on my tablet as well, just cause I was like, eh, maybe I'll have a couple applications to play with. I'm glad I did because that one is actually working. So I'm in the application now, I'm connected to the car, I've got the Wi-Fi connection, I've got good signal, all that's going for me. I'm gonna pull up diagnostic, check out for error codes because that's what I'm here about. I have two codes that I would expect to see, P0102, mass or volume airflow, and P0113, intake air sensor. This thing is working. I can pull the codes out of this car, even though it's a hybrid and it says that I should not be able to. So let's see if I can pull up some live data from this thing. So I'm trying to check out some of the live stream information, the current data that is available. Underneath current data, which seems to be where all of this is, I get a whole list of menus I can go through and check out. I can pull up short-term fuel trims with this. I can pull up long-term fuel trims. So I could look for a vacuum leak, look for a injector issue, diagnose some actual fuel problems of this vehicle. I've got a pretty substantial list of PIDs available here. At the moment, I can't seem to pull up numerous ones at once. I can only pull up one piece of information at a time. Now I went ahead and reconnected the mass airflow sensor, so let's see how clearing the codes work. Clear success. Clearly successful. Now I'm using my Apple iPhone 6S to go ahead and connect to this tool. Even though this is the same OBD Car Doctor application, it seems a little bit better on the iPhone. Connecting was pretty much a non-issue. I can pull up my trouble codes. There are no codes currently because I cleared them with the Android tool, so that's pretty straightforward. I don't know if you can make this out here, but now I see what's going on. If I want to display multiple parameters, multiple PIDs at the same time, I have to buy the advanced version. So I can check that stuff, I just can't view a lot of them as I would like to all at once. Now I'm just holding the thing in drive and playing with the gas pedal and you can see how the RPMs dip as I put a load on it because believe it or not, this Prius doesn't have the power to break it loose. Mass airflow sensor reading. So I can do quite a bit with this tool. I'm actually seeing a lot more than I expected to be able to see. So now, like I said, this is not one of my in-depth reviews. I showed you using this thing. I only tried it on this one vehicle, but it's specifically listed in the instructions that this was not a vehicle I should use this on, and it worked perfectly fine. It cleared the OBD2 codes that were in there. It let me see them. It showed me live data when this thing was running, whenever it actually kicks into running since it's a hybrid and it shuts off and starts when it wants. I did have a little bit of issue with the applications. The recommended Android app just did not work for me. So I ended up using the OBD Car Doctor one. I couldn't display all the information I wanted to there, but that was just because of the free version of the software. You could pick other software to use with this tool. It's a fairly standard open protocol called ELM327 that is widely available. A lot of these different code reader scanner setups use this setup. So you could pick whatever one you like, get in depth with it, try different ones, and see what works for you. And if you like, you can go ahead and invest in a pay version of the softwares to have a little more functionality. There are two points I should probably make about it. Say flaws, cons, they're not really problems with it, but there are things you should know. The first point I should make is that if you're not a particularly tech savvy person, this may be just a little bit over your head. It's not quite as user friendly as a plug-in code reader, regular scan tool setup is. The other flaw, the other point that I should make about this thing is that it communicates via Wi-Fi. The problem with it comes in when you are using it with this tool and your tablet, and then you wanna go online. So maybe you have a code you pulled up, you wanna reference what that code actually means, diagnostic steps for that code. So you wanna jump into your web browser and go ahead. Well, you're gonna to need to disconnect from this tool so that you can get access to either your normal Wi-Fi network or your 4G LTE or whatever protocol you have for your cell signal on that device. 
Now this had no bi-directional controls. So you're not gonna turn on a fan, you're not gonna cycle a fuel pump, any of the stuff you may really wanna do with a scan tool for diagnostic purposes, but that's to be expected. It's a $17.99 tool using free software. That's the big thing you gotta remember. Big, expensive, thousand dollar scan tools, multi-thousand dollar scan tools. The hardware really is not that expensive. A lot of the modern ones are nothing more than like my Amazon Fire tablet in a fancy case, but they're using software that is very specific to their purposes. So if you're looking for a basic OBD2 code reader, basic scanner, this is a pretty darn good option actually. I didn't expect I was gonna like this thing at the onset, and I did have my issues getting connection going, that application that just didn't work, their kind of janky website that they shot me to. Definitely recommend using only applications you get off of your own app store for the device you're using, just for security reasons. So I would say that for the $17.99 that this thing runs, pick yourself up an Amazon Fire tablet. It worked out perfectly fine with my older generation one. This thing could be a really powerful little code reader for a do-it-yourself or even for a professional who maybe doesn't have their own scan tool. Obviously, like I said, this is different from my normal videos. I want to go ahead and give just a, a little bit of an introduction to this tool. I didn't feel that it warranted a, a multi-week review and testing process just for the $17.99 tool, though I am far more impressed with it than I expected to be. Go ahead and drop the video a like if you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you have one of these? Do you have a, another code scanner or reader you'd like? Do you have a $10,000 one that you hate? Let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more content. Not necessarily like this, but more content every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.